so who's, who here is familiar with uh, NFL quarterback Tim Tebow? Okay, well, did you guys know before he was famous, he was a Florida Gator? And according to the 2012 Weekly Reader article, Pay for Play, Tim Tebow brought that university millions of dollars in revenue while he was there. We all know what it's like to put our all into something, and we all expect a positive return. <clears throat> Me being close to a lot of college athletes, I know, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is kind of gone. I know the time and dedication they put into uh, the sports they love. Division I college athletes deserve to be paid for the work <clears throat> they do. That brings their schools <clears throat> a lot of money. <laughs> Today, I will tell you guys about the current NCAA regulations against paying athletes. Then, I will tell you about the time <coughs> these athletes dedicate to their sport. And then, I will tell you how it's such a risk and they get no reward. The National Collegiate Association, or the NCAA, currently has regulations forbidding D1 college athletes from accepting pay in any form for the sports they play. NCAA regulations clearly state in different ways that students may not accept any compensation for the sport. It is mandatory for them to remain amateurs in the sports to remain eligible. So this means they can't accept pay as in money, or they can't accept transportation, clothing, any type of reward. The 2012 NCAA summary of regulations state that you state that you are not eligible in the sport if you have ever accepted money, transportation, or other benefits from an agent or agreed to have an agent market your athletic ability or reputation in that sport. Now that you know about the strict NCAA rules, the first main factor of being a D1 athlete is time. Extremely long hours on and off the field on top of classwork can cause stress on any student, let alone a student athlete. <clears throat> Most students have trouble, have trouble juggling homework, studying, and tests, let alone another full-time physical commitment. Not many people know that <clears throat> outside of games and practice, the athleticism continues with watching film from other schools to see how you can beat them, or even watching the professionals play to see how you can better yourself. College sports is really a full-time commitment. I conducted a phone interview on May 22nd, 2013 with Prairie, the D1 school Prairie View A&M University, that, their shortstop, Walter Wells, and he told me that he spends at least 35 hours a week doing baseball-related activities. That includes practice weightlifting and games. They practice seven days a week from four, um, from three to seven, and they have an hour on top of that weight, of weightlifting every day. He also told me athletes could really benefit from being paid just to help with basic living needs like grocery, school supplies, or even so they can become less dependent on their parents. Risking injuries, falling behind in school, or giving up their social life for the advancement of this school, <coughs> college athletes face a lot. These athletes are bringing their school millions of dollars in revenue, revenue and aren't seeing any of the profit. I found in an article written on April 1st, 2013 by Dave Zarin. He's a sports correspondent and the author of the book Game Over how politics has turned the sports world upside down, that Desmond Howard, who won the 1991 Heisman Trophy while playing for the Michigan Wolverines, called the system wicked. Telling USA Today that you see everybody getting richer and richer, and you walk around and you can't even put gas in your car. You can't even fly home to see your parents. That this is the sad truth of the lives these some of these athletes are living. Giving your all and risking your all to keep your school's record high and to keep the fans happy 
when you can't get a small stipend in return sounds unfair and unjust to me. D1 college athletes do deserve to be paid for the hard work and dedication they give to these, this college's big business of athletics. Today, I've taught you all about the current NCAA rules against paying athletes. I gave an example of the time dedicated by a real student athlete. And um, I showed you guys how sports is a large risk without any personal reward. On November 30th, 2012, a USA Today reporter says, it's all about the money. A student athlete can't borrow $50 or the NCAA gets his nose bent out of shape, but his coach takes millions. And this is true. Don't you guys think it's, all, it's time for these athletes to get a piece of the pie they baked?